We see that in the access to developmental resources and modern technology and efficiencies. Let us also recognize that the benefits of globalization have been very uneven. The summit of the future underlined that the world is in real danger of falling significantly behind in realizing SDG targets. Addressing conflicts and tensions effectively is a particular need of the day. Prime Minister Modi has emphasized that this is not an era of war. Disputes and differences must be settled by dialogue and diplomacy. Agreements once reached must be scrupulously respected. International law should be adhered to without exception. And there should be zero tolerance for terrorism. The situation in the Middle East, West Asia for us, is an understandable concern. There is a widespread anxiety that the conflict would spread further in the region. The world must be prepared to think afresh on long-standing challenges. Our gathering is a message that we are indeed prepared to do so. The BRICS itself is a statement of how profoundly the old order is changing. At the same time, many inequities of the past also continue. In fact, they have assumed new forms and manifestations. We see that in the access to developmental resources and modern technology and efficiencies. Let us also recognize that the benefits of globalization have been very uneven. Adding to all that, the COVID pandemic and multiple conflicts have aggravated the burdens borne by the Global South. Concerns of health, food, and fuel security are particularly acute. The summit of the future underlined that the world is in real danger of falling significantly behind in realizing SDG targets. How do we reconcile this contradiction and ensure that the benefits of change reach those who are currently left behind? How do we create a more equitable global order? First, by strengthening and expanding platforms of an independent nature, and by widening the choices in different domains and minimizing undue reliance on those that can be leveraged. This is really where BRICS can make a difference for the Global South. Second, by reforming established institutions and mechanisms, especially the UN Security Council in the permanent and the non-permanent categories. So too, the multilateral development banks whose working procedures are just as outdated as that of the UN. India initiated an effort during its G20 presidency, and we are glad to see that Brazil is taking it forward. Third, by democratizing the global economy to creating more production hubs, the COVID experience is a sharp reminder of the need for more resilient, redundant, and shorter supply chains. For essential needs, every region legitimately aspires to create their own production capabilities. Fourth, by correcting distortions in global infrastructure that are a legacy from the colonial era, the world urgently needs more connectivity options that enhance logistics and mitigate risks. This must be a collective endeavor for common good with utmost respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty. And fifth, by sharing experiences and new initiatives. India's digital public infrastructure, its unified payment interface, the Gati Shakti infrastructure all hold a larger relevance. The International Solar Alliance, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, the Global Biofuel Alliance, Mission Life, and the International Big Cat Alliance are similarly initiatives of common interest. As a first responder, be it for natural calamities, health emergencies, or economic crisis, we seek to do our fair share. Excellencies, 
Addressing conflicts and tensions effectively is a particular need of the day. Prime Minister Modi has emphasized that this is not an era of war. Disputes and differences must be settled by dialogue and diplomacy. Agreements, once reached, must be scrupulously respected. International law should be adhered to without exception, and there should be zero tolerance for terrorism. Excellencies, the situation in the Middle East, West Asia for us, is an understandable concern. There is a widespread anxiety that the conflict would spread further in the region. Maritime trade has also been deeply affected. The human and material consequences of further escalation are truly serious. Any approach has to be fair and durable, leading to a two-state solution. Excellencies, we meet in difficult circumstances. The world must be prepared to think afresh on long-standing challenges. Our gathering is a message that we are indeed prepared to do so. I thank you for your attention. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon. 